Hey guys, uh, doing another little video here um, on this uh, LifeProof vinyl plank flooring that I've been installing. Um, in this video, I'm going to kind of go through uh, the steps it took to basically bend this life LifeProof plank um, to create these stair treads. So here's kind of one of the pieces I bent already. Um, these are some of the stairs I've installed already. Um, so, you know, I'm going to kind of go through the step-by-step -step process of how to kind of create these stairs. I, uh, watched some videos online of some other people doing these stairs. Um, but, you know, some of them seem to be kind of missing a few of the steps and, you know, some of them were a little different. So this is kind of my process and how it worked. Um, and, uh, you know, so far it seems to work pretty well. I was a little skeptical at first. Um... But so far, you know, it seems pretty sturdy, and I, I like the look, and, uh, you know, I really didn't have a ton of other options, or at least ones that I liked. You know, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of other things you can do. You know, I looked at, into these Kappa treads. I actually bought the Kappa treads, because they're the only real um, solution that, that matches life proof, or at least this this life proof that I got. Um, so, you know, matched and everything, but there were some issues I ran into, um, that a lot of people I think run into with those Kappa treads. I mean, I think they looked fine and would have worked fine, but you know, there's some issues kind of with the, um, the landing, you know, at the bottom of the show up here. Um, you know, how that transitions, there really wasn't any good solution for that, at least for my application. And so, you know, this just for me seemed like the best, uh, solution and um, well you know it, there is some trials and tribulations it, it's taking a long time you know it's not a fast process but in the end I think it's gonna give a really good look but anyway we'll kind of go through the steps on uh, on how to do this so we'll just kind of show you what's going on here um, so get up to here and so kind of the first step is in my case, at least stripping off all this ugly carpet. There's the carpet. Strip all that off. You know, there's nails, there's, um, in my case, there's paint underneath. So I also had to go and scrape all that paint off. That's what this stair looks like. And then down here, there's one with like a partially installed. So basically there's one, that's the, that's the tread that I bent. And then this is kind of the back piece that I'm putting on. Um, to cover the rest of the, the tread. I haven't installed any of the, the risers yet. There's going to be some, I'm basically, I bought some um, kind of pre, pre uh, primed risers that are meant just as like a cover plate that kind of are going to cover this, you know, white backing or, or board that's kind of, you know, beat, beat up and whatnot. So eventually that'll be on there too. But um, just to cover kind of the step for the, for the the treads basically you know you want to measure measure the width of the tread i i kind of built this really janky rig <laughs> to kind of uh measure the treads basically what was going on the, the stringers here are super warped in like both directions so like a normal um me, you know tool that you use to to measure the the tread width wasn't really working that well it was only getting like one of the angles there's like basically two angles I had to cut this out, so I just took some cardboard. This way I could get the correct angle on this like warped stringer and then take that measurement to my tread then and cut it. Here's one that's been cut and you know, dry, I'm just dry fitting it on the tread here to make sure it fits. So I've been getting a pretty good cut and fit, you know, um, and eventually I, I might put some caulking on the edges to kind of, you know, clean it up a little bit. But so far this little stupid cardboard thing is working pretty well um, to get the measurements on there. So that's the first step, you know, you cut it, make sure it fits. And then once you have all that, you can go and, uh, bend the piece, you know, to make that nosing, that bull nose. Um, and you know, everyone, it's going to be a little different for every stair, but so this is kind of specific to this one, but you know, I think this can work for a lot of people and, uh, you know, it's going to save, it does save a lot of money compared to those Kappa treads. You know, those things are not cheap. It, it was like over, over $800, I think for all of those Kappa treads, 
and you know they're really i don't even think they're as going to be as durable as this it's just an mdf board with a thin layer of uh vinyl on top of it you know i think this actually might last a little longer and be a little more durable and i like the look better and it's going to save the transition that i was talking about so what i was talking about there is this landing basically you know, I, I had those cap treads and I'm like, how, how is this cap tread going to fit here and then transition to the vinyl that I'm going to install on that landing? You know, it's not going to work. They're different level heights, you know, so it'd be the, their suggestion was to put a transition piece there, which I really did not like at the top of the stairs. Um, I was thinking, you know, maybe there could be like a, another kind of transition, like a step, you know, like a shim it down or something, but that wasn't really going to work either. Um, so doing bending these treads, basically I'm going to be able to put one of the, <clears throat> one of the bent um, planks with the nosing on there. And that's just going to seamlessly transition to the rest of the, the vinyl um, on, the, on the landing. So, you know, those are just some of the reasons why I'm doing this. Um, like I said, so far it's working out pretty good. So um, now I'll kind of get into how you actually bend uh, this stair tread all right now that we got this tread cut cut to size um there's actually another step um i forgot about that you have to do or at least that i'm doing you know this is what a lot of people online weren't doing and i think it's kind of an important thing basically there's this rubber backing that's on this vinyl plank um and you know i was watching some pro video videos of people installing vinyl plank on stairs and all of them, you know, recommend that you rip off the backing if you're going to put this on a step, which I think is a good idea. Um, you don't want the things, this, the treads moving on the stairs whatsoever. You know, it could be a safety hazard and whatnot. So the, the first step is ripping all the stuff off and it's a real pain. I told you this is a time consuming process, but this stuff does peel um, off of it. You know, you could probably use like a, a sander or a tool. I don't have that. Um, so I've just been painstakingly kind of slowly peeling this off until it, it's completely bare. Um, so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And then, <laughs> then we can get into kind of bending the piece. I got the piece. Uh, I got the backing completely ripped off. Um, so this take this is a bit of a struggle <laughs> but i found if you could try to rip the whole thing off in almost one piece it comes off pretty easily uh, like i said you could try to get a tool or something to make that process a little quicker but um you know like i said before uh gluing this down to that backing i don't think is a great idea you know that if that's the only thing between the stair and is that backing and glue, you know, the, that backing could just rip right off and all of a sudden someone slips and falls or something like that, you know, and I don't know what kind of glue is really going to stick to that very well. So, you know, I, like I said, I think it was a necessary step. Um, so another thing, I, another little option that could have worked for the stairs, I suppose. Um, I have this, like this other, uh, vinyl, uh, transition piece that I bought that all, it, supposedly matches the sta the the floor it kind of does it's not perfect i'm actually going to use it here um on this landing to cover up this you know because there is no bull nose on this on this part of the landing so you know this is really the only option there um and that's kind of you know it says on here like on these instructions you can use it with a bull nose I just did really did not like that look, you know, I just think it was going to look bad on the stairs and there was going to be a lip between, you know, the vinyl pieces on the stairs. I didn't want a lip. I liked, I like this bending method because it creates a nice seamless transition. So, you know, this once again could be an option. These, I think this longer strip is like 34, 35 bucks at Home Depot. So, you know, it's really not that expensive or it's kind of expensive, but you know, price wasn't, the cost wasn't really an issue for me. I, I like, I bought the Kappa treads thinking that was going to be the way to go. I just did not like that transition is, it was the main issue. Um, and the look, so that was the main factor for me. I just don't know what else I could have done to get the, the look I wanted. So this is kind of where I'm at. <clears throat> so 
All right. Now that we got that backing off, um, I'll kind of start going through the steps of how to actually bend this thing. Um, so you can see here, I actually bought um, one of these one of these like pre-made stair treads that has the bull nose on it. Um, and this is really close to what's actually installed on my stair. So basically what I'm doing is using this as a little jig to bend those stairs. Um, and so far it's been working pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we'll kind of get this rigged up and, uh, kind of go through the rest. <clears throat> I forgot another step before we start bending this thing. Um, so basically, before you, before I was bending these, um, I'm trying to rip up. Uh, it's a good idea just to rip off this little. Uh, I guess it's the the tongue piece here on the on the tread. You you don't want that when you're bending it. So I'm just taking a razor blade and kind of ripping that off. You know, quickly it comes off pretty easily. Um, so yeah, do that before you bend it. All right, next step. <clears throat> so basically, I drew drew a line on here. That's kind of the measurement of how much uh, space I need underneath the bull nose. So basically I was using, oops. Um, I was using like this, this fabric measuring tape to figure, you know, go underneath the bull nose. Uh, to figure out how much space I needed and roughly I just needed like an inch and so now I have that line and I basically can kind of use that line to gauge where to put this step and I take this board and put it over that line um, kind of get it lined up and you know that's pretty good so that's kind of clamped down. Oops. So that's kind of clamped down. And then I'm taking the clamps and clamping this all together. All right, so now it's all clamped. And basically now this is kind of the, the rig, the jig, you know, it's, it's clamped down there. And um, basically I figured out you know, after doing some experiments with this, I was doing it with other boards. The easiest way to bend it um, was to clamp it, you know, on the side, the small side like that. So then um, when you, you can, you heat up this and basically now it'll bend using the leverage of the piece itself to kind of go around this thing. So this, this seemed to work best. Um, you know, there's probably a lot of other ways you could do this. I see, I saw videos online of people actually bending it on the stair itself. That seemed a lot harder to me, um, especially working on the stairs. You know, maybe that's not an option for some people. That's just the way, it, you know, maybe it's the way they do it. But for me, um, this seemed like the easiest way to get it consistent, you know, and so far it seems to work pretty well. Um, so the, the other thing I saw a lot of people doing online as well was they were actually kind of routing out this part of the of the plank to get like kind of a tighter fit, um, around the bull nose. Um, I didn't really like that idea so much. I thought that might kind of weaken the plank. So I'm not doing that. Um, so far, you know, I haven't done that at all. I've just kind of left, just tore that backing off and then just bent it the way it was. Seems to be working. Um, you can see there might, you know, it might leave like a slight gap just cause it can't get it perfectly tight to this bull nose. But to me that that's not a re really a big deal because I'm basically just filling that gap with glue when I put it on the actual s over the stair tread. So I don't think that's a big issue. Um, and you know, it seems to be working fine. Uh, you know, I think the integrity of the plank is kind of, kind of, um, stays there. The other reason I like this doing it this way, um, it allows you to heat heat up the plank. So I'm, I'm using a heat gun to heat this up. Um, it allows you to heat it from the backside and not heat it from the front. You know, I think heating it from the front is going to potentially kind of, uh, could potentially damage the finish a little bit more, or at least have a tendency to damage the finish. 
heating it from the back, you know, you don't really care if this gets some marks on it from the heat gun or whatever. You don't have to be too careful about it, but it, it's effective. You know, it heats it all the way through and then it gets pliable enough where you can actually bend it over. So um, I'm going to get the, the heat gun fired up and kind of show you that process. All right, so I got this thing all rigged up. Um, and I use another clamp actually to secure it to this bookshelf over here. So this thing's, you know, tight on here. A lot of you are probably wondering like why I'm doing this in such a weird spot, but <laughs> unfortunately I don't have a garage or workshop or anything. So it's kind of my DIY setup as well, but it's working, making it work. So, uh, it's, it's, that's good. But anyway, um, I got the heat gun here. Um, and uh, as far as the settings on this, you know, I'm, it's got some adjustable temperature and stuff, but I've just been using it kind of on the highest setting, I think, or close to, maybe not quite the highest, like just under the highest, but um, there's two modes. There's basically, this is the low, the low air mode, and this is the high. I've been using, or I've been using the low, actually, it seems to work, the low seems to work the best. I don't know, or it just has worked so far. You could probably use either, but... I think the key is, um, you know, you heat this thing up evenly and, you know, it takes maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, I haven't really been timing it, but, you know, I'm just sitting here going back and forth. Um, and then basically you can kind of tell once it starts becoming pliable um, when it's time to kind of bend it over completely. So basically just, yeah, I'm heating it up evenly for about 10 10 15 minutes um i'm not gonna go do all that on camera so i'll start heating it up once it's kind of ready then we'll i'm actually gonna start uh showing the bending all right so i'm about kind of halfway through so I'm, I'm still heating um but you can tell you know I'm, I'm starting to put just a little bit of pressure on the plank here and you can tell that it's kind of starting to bend. So I'm going to keep going for a little bit longer until it feels, you know, pliable enough to, to just bend all the way. Um, so patience, patience is a virtue as far as this whole process goes. Um, you know, you want to heat it up slowly and you want to heat it up evenly and you want to, not bend it too early before you know before it's ready so you got to find it kind of find that sweet spot so i got a little bit more to go and then i'll be able to fully bend this thing all right so i got to heat it up to the point where it's ready to bend so just gonna bend it over it's good to have like all your clamps kind of ready to go um because you don't want to wait too long for this thing to potentially harden back up before you're before you're done bending it, so all right. So I'm just trying to get it as tight as possible on there. Pretty tight. I think of the clamp. And I kind of maybe shift them. I guess it'd be nice. It'd be best if you had a, even a couple more clamps. would be great. I don't, but I'm kind of making do with what I got here. So anyway, I got it all clamped. And it's pretty flat on there. I think it's pretty good. So there we go. It's all clamped down. And I'll just leave it like this for, I don't know, it seems like maybe like 20 minutes or so. Um... I heard, I read online you could potentially, uh, you know, like rub it down with some cold water to make it kind of harden faster, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I've just been kind of letting it sit 
you know, for a while until it's definitely, it's not as hot. And, uh, you know, once, once that's all done, um, I'll rip it off and we'll take a look at it. All right, this thing's finally cooled down. So we're gonna take out the clamps and take a look at it. It's all bent you can see it's solid as a rock um, and yeah that's that's the drill so um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, kind of show you how this would be then you know glued down to the stair um, and there might be actually there is there's one more step <laughs> so once you have it all um, formed and everything, the next step before you glue it is I was taking some uh, sandpaper and sanding it down um, because the the back of the the, the vinyl here um, it's pretty smooth, so you know there's really not a lot for the glue to stick to. So you kind of want to just rough it up a bit so the there's a little bit of um, there's basically just so there's something for the glue to kind of get adhered to. Um, and I do it inside the nose, pretty much everywhere. I just get it, get a little grit on there basically. So the glue has something to stick to. And you know, that way, once you get it on the, on the tread, it's rock solid. You know, it's not, not, there's no chance it's going to move. I mean, the only worry might be, <laughs> the things might be impossible to actually take off. So I'm hopefully that's not going to happen at any point, but I'd rather be safe than sorry on, on the stairs. So, uh, yeah, just get that all sanded down and then I'll kind of, I'll dry fit it on the stair and kind of go over some of the glue. All right. So I got the piece here. Um, it's a little hard to do this with the camera, but anyway, um, I'm just kind of dry fitting this into place and making sure it fits and uh, it seems like it fits really pretty good um, but you know if it's a little snug you know I was taking a rubber mallet and just kind of making sure it was kind of in the right place evenly and it kind of shifts around a little bit but eventually you'll kind of figure out where the sweet spot is and you can kind of feel underneath see where it might be like a little off on one spot and kind of get it in the right place but yeah for the most part it seems like it fits per pretty perfect you know i got a little bit of space on the sides you know and i'll probably just put some caulking there but for the most part you know it's pretty much a perfect fit the next step would be to also cut out the back piece and i don't have that this is a different one but you know basically you just want to make sure that fits in there evenly as well and then you know the the tongue and the groove will fit together Let's see. and it can be a little tricky because it's kind of uh, tight but anyway you can kind of get those together and then that's where you can kind of pound them together it's not really fitting perfectly right now but there it's a little better There we go. So that's kind of like, that's the finished look right there. Um, and you, you know, kind of get it lined up and that's, you know, that's basically how, how the look I'm going for. So the, um, but that's just dry fitting it, you know, so you can take it apart. So to actually glue it, it's a little tricky, but you know, you just do a pattern in here. Um, so here's the glue I was using. I'm using. It's this PL3X premium uh, construction adhesive. So it's not actually glue. It's a construction adhesive, but it's pretty strong stuff. It's, um, I believe, a polyurethane um, glue. And uh, you know, there. It was basically the glue that was I was gonna use for the kappa treads. Um, it was recommended to use a urethane glue and. Um, I kind of did some research. This seems to be kind of the best 
bang for the buck. You know, it's not the, there's, there's glues that are supposedly stronger, but I don't really think it's necessary. I think this is kind of the best glue. Um, and you know, over, everything else is kind of overkill above that. Um, I'm not sure if you'd want to use anything under this though, either, you know, like a liquid nails. I don't know if that it might hold, but I don't know. This stuff seems to work really well. Um, so I'd, I'd probably just go with this, but once again, the key is you got to take that backing off to get it to adhere. I would not use this stuff with the backing on, you know, some people were leaving the backing on and you, they found some sort of glue that worked. I don't know what that is, but all my research, that was, that was not a good idea basically is what I, what I, uh, kind of discovered. So like I said, you, you sand that down. Once again, I'm also taking the back off this piece, sanding that down, and then, you know, I'm gluing kind of a frame. I'm putting a big bead in the, in the nosing here to kind of, the, to kind of fill any gap that there might be because, you know, the actual treads here, they're not in the best shape. There's some like unevenness. There's some kind of like nicks and, and, uh, you know, here there's like a knot or something. So I'm trying to fill in any space there is between this nosing and there and trying to get that full of that construction adhesive. So I'm putting a pretty big amount in the nose here and I'm also putting a pretty generous amount on this, but you know, it's kind of your normal pattern, a pretty good amount. And then you do the same thing you do when you dry fit it, you know, you stick it on there and it's kind of actually makes it the best thing to do is do the same thing here and you know try to get this kind of dry fitted so you got your you know no there's no crease or anything in there you know get this kind of pounded together you know so the glue let's say the glue's on there get this kind of pounded together so it's nice and tight and then kind of just tap it into place so you don't lose any any gap here you don't want any gap to form um so you want to make sure that's all tight tapped in with the glue in it and once you got it to the right place you know try to stay off of the step um i ran into a problem where i was gluing like three of them and i had my foot on the bottom step and it it almost it pretty much just slipped right out <laughs> of place and uh it was kind of a pain getting it back and kind of made a huge mess too so just be careful stepping on the ones that are drying but yeah if you can try to stay off of it and let it just heart let it cure um, and then, you know, once that's done, I'll go down here to a step that's been glued and it is as hard as a rock. Like I couldn't, like it is not going anywhere. It is super stuck on there and you know, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's safe and you know, the, it's, there's absolutely no give on it whatsoever. So I'm not worried about that going anywhere. And I think it'll be pretty durable. I think more durable even than the Kappa treads, arguably. I mean, I, I haven't used those, but I just don't see that being super durable over time. We'll see if these are these work. But, you know, a lot of people online say they haven't had any issues. A lot of people put vinyl on their stairs. Just not, They're not necessarily bending it over the nose like I'm doing. So, um, you know, hopefully this video helps. You know, I'll see how much time I have kind of burned through a lot of time putting this video together. Um, but I might add some more shots, you know, if I, if, uh, me actually doing the gluing, it's kind of hard to film that. Um, otherwise I might do another video of kind of the final, you know, once it's all done. But I think the main thing is I wanted to kind of just get that process of getting this, um, the treads bent, you know, and everything in place, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I left out, but you know, for the most part, that's all the steps. So hopefully, you know, um, this kind of helps helps any DIYers doing this you know it's it's a kind of a grueling process but I think in the end it's it's really worth it like the look especially to get you know I have the floor down upstairs and I really wanted it matching on these stairs all the way down so this is the best solution I could come up with you know with all my research and other people doing kind of similar things so you know I wanted to put this together just to kind of help help everyone out 
uh, and hopefully kind of clear up some issue, anything, any, uh, anything with the, you know, the gluing and the bending and, you know, so that's, that's kind of my take on it. Hopefully, hopefully it helps you guys out. Hey guys. Uh, so I just wanted to do kind of a final wrap-up video, kind of an update of how uh, the stairs are going. Um, I was not intending to make a video this long, but, you know, I wanted to kind of thoroughly go through all those steps and, you know, make sure I covered everything. So that's just kind of the way it turned out. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, so yeah, I got, you know, all the, all the, tr all the stair treads laid. Um, there's still a little bit of work to do. There's, I still have yet to do the risers, um, some cock work and painting and whatnot, but you know, all the stairs are glued down. Um, and this is kind of the main thing I wanted to, to show. Uh, so this is that transition that I was kind of going for. Um, this was a bit tricky. So basically, you know, I had to cut this piece out. I, had to, I didn't realize that the stringer was actually the same height as the floor level. So what I had to do was actually cut the width of this to make it the right, um, make it the right size. And then I had to bend, leave another part long and, and form that over it. And you know, that's, that's how that piece worked. The other kind of weird part was uh, that I didn't think about until I got to it was, you know, I was worried about the level of this thing because I ripped off the backing um, and I was wondering, you know, worried like, how is this, is this going to actually fit into the next piece? You know, when you install, cause you can see I installed just the, the floor goes back and there's no transition. It's just installed normally after this piece, but, and the rest is floating, but I was worried, you know, to get the, this to lock in this joint here. Um, you know, as it, it, maybe with the glue, I was like hoping it would be at the right level. But actually what I ended up doing was I left a thin piece of that backing, like a, just a one inch strip, let's say on the back here. So uh, everything else is glued down. Like I did before, you know, I glued it all the way and on the nosing, but I just left a thin strip of that backing simply. So the, the height would be identical to the piece that then went in, uh, locked in behind it. So that seemed to work out. I, I don't see any issues with it. Um, but yeah, that, I feel like if you would have just glued it down, all of a sudden this piece would be a little bit lower than that piece. And you might've had a bad, um, kind of gap there on the, and the pieces might not have locked in perfectly. So that's just kind of one thing I ran into, but beyond that, I think it turned out pretty good. You know, I might need to try to find some trim to kind of cover this up, but I'm not too worried about that. You know, this is still a way better look then if I would have done a cap a tread, had to put a whole transition piece here, I just, that would have been horrible. I, you know, it would have driven me crazy, driven me nuts. So um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So the other thing I have installed here, I got that, um, I got this, this transition piece on this landing installed. Um, and I actually didn't have the riser installed here and I got that nice and flush with the wall. And, um, got that painted and everything. So that's going to be like what the other risers are going to look like. It's just going to be a white riser, but this turned out way better than I thought it was going to. And there's kind of a weird transition over here where I had to make like a 45 on that, but that turned out good. It's, it's looking way better than what it was before. It's probably even a little better than I thought it would turn out. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so one other thing I wanted to mention about this, uh, transition piece, I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier um, how this could work on a, you know, on a, if you're going to put in vinyl plank on your stairs, you could use this as your nosing instead. Um, so I was thinking, you know, what if something went horribly wrong with the stairs? You know, let's say, um, for whatever reason, something got busted, you know, it broke or, you know, the nosing got bent or I don't know, whatever it, something got wrecked and the stair was, you know, looking bad or no longer really function very well. Um, I was thinking about it and basically I think you could, you could potentially use this as a backup option. You could, you could basically go and take a, a sawzall or, you know, reciprocating saw and basically cut, cut that vinyl off the nose, the form nose part of it back and cut it back to the original stair tread. So then basically you would just have vinyl planks that are glued on your stair. So if you cut that all off, 
you just go and then buy this and put this over the top on the nosing. Um, so that would be, you know, a so potential solution if, if it, something went wrong, you know, so far, um, we've been, we've been using the stairs for a bit now. Um, they seem to be holding up fairly well. I don't, there's no signs of damage. There's no, and there's, you know, pets running around through here, um, all day. And, uh, you know, they seem to be holding up. They seem solid. Uh, so I'm not really concerned about that, but it was kind of in the back of my mind, you know, what if, you know, generally, um, this is, you know, I just, this is a DIY project. It's an experimental install. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I'm not a professional by any means. So, you know, it was kind of, there's a little bit of risk involved with that. So I was thinking, you know, as a backup that could work. So all else fails, I could always go fall back on that. So I think that's like, you know, I wanted to mention that just cause if some of you are apprehensive about trying this out, you could always figure out a solution similar, you know, with another piece of trim. So, and it would, it would look fine. It's just not as ideal as this. So, but yeah, I, I recommend, you know, before doing this, do your own research, look at other videos, maybe, you know, look into some other options. But for me, this is kind of, uh, it seemed like the best option. It was something I wanted to try at least and give it a shot. I'm, and so far I'm really happy with the way it turned out. You know, I got, like I said, um, a huge upgrade from the carpet that was here before. And now I got, you know, that seamless transition I wanted um, down this landing. And you can see, you know, the stairs look really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out and, you know, I, all the other options I looked into this, this just turned out the best one for me, it turned out to be the best one for me. So yeah, I think that's, uh, pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Um, so yeah, I hope, hope this helped you guys out. You know, it's meant as, you know, kind of a, my learning experience here and, you know, it's, it's hard to find exact information for what you're doing. So there's always going to be these little tricky spots and it's kind of a, a labor of love that you got to kind of figure these things out. So, you know, I'm hoping my struggle kind of helps, helps someone else, you know, put the floor together, get the stairs together and, uh, you know, tackle these DIY projects. So thanks for watching.